Hello, I'm man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as you do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under featured content. You just hit subscribe to the opening call. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of 22% or $199. And you can get it for the year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come, bottom line, 30-day money-back guarantee. Check it out. Do it for a month. You enjoy it. Great. Just keep going. For some reason, it doesn't work for you. Get your money back. And in Basil's opening call, he has about 11 different archives so you can understand exactly how to ride that wave. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? Welcome back. Thank you. Great to be back, and thank you for all the help. I really appreciate it, man. That's my pleasure, of course. Yeah, this is very interesting. So um, you weren't your last Tuesday, but Tuesday early morning pre-market for my subscribers from opening call, we, we, start, we started a what I call a shorter-term long position in the Dow Diamonds. Okay. So um, we still have a, a core small position from way back in uh, it was as April of 2000 and uh, what was it 2020. So uh, we've we've kept that, but most importantly we've traded around it with the short position of the Dow, long position. So this one, my thinking was that there was a pattern that I call the lowercase H pattern, and because the market had held it down, not the Qs, the Qs went under their left side low, but the low of the 24th of uh, February 32,272 ran up and then stalled, but came back and held about uh, 200 points above that, or 300 points actually, 32,578. I thought we've had five days of consolidation. I call that a squash. When it just goes sideways, it's like it's wait, like a spring is just waiting to do something. It did the same sort of thing back in early February in the Dow, uh, where it, it took took off from the bottom and it just stalled. So my thinking here was that everything I'm looking at is suggesting that there's a base that's formed and it doesn't tell you how high you can go. It just says because the base is there, the risk reward really favors the upside. So we got we went long and I had to see how it tested this uh, dashed line. You can see in the daily chart on the left, there's a little green and red um, a channel, a little mini channel I call inside track repellent zone. I needed to see how quickly and how um, how um, how much the candle, how big the candle would be if it broke out of that. But it did that and then it continued higher and each day, just about from that Tuesday, each day had this big move in the Dow which closed almost at the high. And then normally what I say is that when you get a move like that, the last hour of whatever the gain is, you usually give back 20 or 30 percent of that last hour, and then you try to see if there's further um, acceleration to the upside. Well, you can see by the charts that it was very quick, just there was hardly any give back, and then the market moved up. So the Dow itself is acting very well. It, it, it's gone four days now, because the day's young, but right now we're up 234. Um, 34,374 is the orange 200-period exponential moving average in the daily. So uh, in the Chapman Wave, we're always looking for a buy signal to upgrade to a buy mode. And the implication there is there should be at least four higher peaks. I alphabetize them, A, B, C, D. It goes to E, F, and G. But D is really the objective in the Chapman Wave methodology, take it, taking off. So we went to a leg C. We're in that leg C. I expect there will be a bit of a pullback. And then that 35,000 area, we're at 34,775 right now. That's going to be the big test. Do we do it in leg C? Do we pull back and then go to that missing leg D? But if you look at the daily chart, the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, look how wide that, that aperture is between the, the green line, the nine period differential, and the red line. This, this is the slower moving 26 period moving average. To me, that's a good sign so far. Is that the this first is, shot I'm looking at, Basil? We're that's looking at? the one on the yeah. Cool. The one on okay, the left. I got it. Yeah. Right. Awesome. So Thanks. this is the daily, the one in the middle yep. is the weekly, and the one on the right is, is the monthly. Right. So what's really important is 
I love when the stochastic goes over 80%, especially over 85%. This is at 96%. So if it flattens out, if it comes back, you'll see, uh, you pointing to this chart, here's the stochastic back around about the uh, 12th, 13th of February. Look how quickly it went. It went over the 80% level and very quickly it pulled back. And look what happened. The market failed, the Dow failed at peak C minus and went down to a lower low. So it's really important that the stochastic holds. That's number one. Number two is the weekly chart has come all the way back to what was the support level of this inside track for a long, long time. Look how many times it hit all the way. Go I, I can go back further, but even right. going back to July. And then it became announced resistance. So we're right in this track to, to say that you've broken the resistance. You already have to see 35,250 on a closing basis in the week. So we're kind of early in this whole turnaround if it's going to continue higher. But what's really impressive for me is this monthly chart on the right. And if, if you look, I'm going to go to the S&P because that's the one that had a, a technique that I developed years ago. So where did I, I type that? I typed it in the wrong place. Was um, a candle that I identified that I call a Roman candle, Chapman Wave Roman candle, because there's this tiny little wick at the top and a long body, but it closes halfway to two thirds off the low. And that's this candle right here in the monthly chart. And my rule of thumb is if the price, it doesn't matter if it's a daily or a weekly or a monthly chart, if the price holds in a shorter time frame, halfway into the lower part of the wick, halfway into that wick. Usually you test the low or you can even go lower. Well, we did that. This is the January candle. February candle actually has almost the same look. And we've tested it. And now we're at the upper part. So when you think of what's going on in the world, what's going on in interest rates, to think that we've gone from 48.18 down to 41.14 and all this noise and the candle is halfway, actually a little bit more than halfway between the high and the low. I'm kind of impressed. I must say, I never expected that we would get that. And the month is young. We've still got, uh, what, about seven or eight trading days to Thursday a week where the month finishes. But I just wanted to say that so far, I'm kind of impressed with the speed with which we've, we've come back. And um, whoops. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to talk about is, so we went long deer. Uh, sorry about that. Let me just get rid of that. Okay. Um, so, dear, um, is I, I thought with the wheat skyrocketing like this, that deer would be appropriate to have. And um, it's a I'm nice sure move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, this that's... is a very nice move. It's at an all-time high. I've got this technique. You, you remember this one? It's called the stork leg formation. Oh yeah. This How is, can I forget this... that? <laughs> <laughs> if the oval pattern continues to break out like this, it actually can become a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. It doesn't have to have the full length, but it's it it, it moves very nicely above the oval pattern. <clears throat> My concern here is that this long rectangle formation in the weekly chart, if you remember, I would spoken about this in the IWM, had the Russell 2000 had this huge sideways move, broke out to a peak D and they came right back. So I have to watch this very closely, but so far D is acting really well. And we've got a couple of others that are doing very nicely. So not complaining about this move, but I now comes the test. This week is the test. Do we get to a D and then what happens at a peak D in both here and in the Dow. And folks, very easy to get Basil's newsletter coming to our website. Hit the opening call. Basil, have a great one, safe one. Look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. You Thank too. you.